Hi everyone, Kira here, and today I'm going to show you how to take a leftover little um, metal tin and turn it into a little caddy for something. In my case, mine is for tea. And I'm just going to use some simple tools, so let's get started. So what I have gathered here are some tools and some clay. So I have my set of graduated round circle cutters and I've chosen two of them and you can see these are really nice cutters they are seamless and they um, they're pretty tall so you can use them for other things like in rows and little boxes and things that you might want to use there's a you can see the seam but the seam is is smooth so it's it's pretty cool um, so I've selected two that are gonna fit on um, this thing I'm gonna cover I have one of the um, Kaleido flower punches I have a border cutter that I'm not going to use to cut a border, so you'll see what I'm going to do instead. I have the Floral Fantasy Rubber Stamp. Primo Accents are my favorite clays right now. I've got Purple Pearl and Sunset Pearl. I also have some bronze that I already rolled out. And this thing. Okay, so this is a tin, and I um, purchased some Republic of Tea samplers. This is from a tea sample and um, you can see there's still a little tea residue in there because I will continue to use this to hold tea sachets. So um, it's airtight when it's closed and it's just a pretty cool little tin container and I liked it so I peeled off the original stickers and I'm going to go ahead and um, cover this with clay. Step one, I've rolled out a sheet of bronze clay to a number four, which is a medium thin thickness, and I've made it larger than the circle cutter that I picked for the largest size I'm going to use. And I am going to use my border cutter now as a stamper, and I'm going to use it to create a pattern on my clay. So really, I'm just going to use it without putting it all the way through. So anything that you have, you can use as a texture tool. You don't have to always use these things to cut all the way through your clay. Now that my clay is impressed and patterned, I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece out. So always give your cookie cutters a little twist. And now I have a patterned sheet of clay and I'm going to take this apart and work on one side at a time. So this I'm intending for this side. So I'm just going to lay it on here base down and there's still a little tiny bit of adhesive left over what's that I have a little divot there left over from the um, sticker that was on my tea container so I'm leaving it there in the hopes that it will sort of assist my process I'm just smoothing this down and making sure that I don't have air bubbles and polymer clay does really like to stick to metal. Um, it's not usually a problem. So as you can see, I haven't attached anything to the metal of the tin except for the clay. So that's step one. Step two, we're going to make the flower with pur purple pearl. And these flowers I find tricky to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and do it my way, which is to flip it over, press it in, because I want to make sure that all of that design of the flower is actually getting impressed, especially around the edges, because I have other plans for the, um, the middle of the flower. But those edge patterns here that you can see popping up, I want to capture those.
So once you've cleaned up your flower, you can lay it on, press it in the middle, because I don't care what happens right here, and then gently press the edges down so they make contact with the bronze. Okay, the middle I'm going to now cover with another piece of clay. I've rolled my clay to my thickest setting, and I'm going to go ahead and impress it with a rubber stamp. You can use any rubber stamp. This just happens to be the Floral Fantasy rubber stamp. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my smallest cutter here and cut that out. And this is going to be the new center of my flower. And then with this, I'm going to roll this into a snake. So I have my snake and this is going to go on the outside of this. And as I come around, I'm going to press it flat. And I'm going to stay away from getting close to the edge because I do want this container to close properly. So I'm going to go like right up to, but try very hard not to overlap the edge there. When you get to the end where they are going to meet and overlap, you just cut that off and use your finger to smooth your seam. And now we have choices. So you can either leave it rough looking like that, or you can use a tool to finish it off. We also have to decide if this top part is done. Um, I could come back and make like little balls or something with my bronze clay, or I can introduce a new color, which is what I think I'm gonna do. And I also have decided that I'm going to write a word on here with my metal letter stamps. So I'm going to write T on it because that's what's going to be inside this container. And because I am a teaaholic, um, I have, I, I can't even tell you, probably 50 different kinds of tea downstairs in my pantry. And um, I think this will be really cute. I can put this in my purse and take it with me. Like if I want to go somewhere and have my own tea. So I'm going to write on there too. This is Peacock Pearl. And I am going to surround my inner flower center there with little dots of peacock pearl. Okay, last one. And because texture is the name of the game, I've got a couple of metal stamps here to do some texture. So this is actually one of my favorites. It, um, it's the one that, let's see if you can focus on that. It looks kind of like an octopus sucker. That's how I think of it. Um, but it's pretty cool. It gives you sort of a round textured thing with a little dot in the middle. It's real easy to use and it has the added benefit of helping me press all my clay down without using my fingertips, which would leave fingerprint marks and dents. So now instead I'm leaving a deliberate textured mark. And then around the outside edge, I'm going to use this one that looks like leaves and I'm going to give it a leaf texture. Now my letters are quite small. So I'm just making a little sort of pad of clay here to write the word T on. It's going to go right here. I'm going to start with the E in the middle. And that way I can get everything centered. So press my E, my A. Just check your direction before you press things in. And my T. 
And now I'm going to bake. For the back, I picked a slightly larger cutter that's going to go all the way around this and hopefully bring my clay pretty close to the edge. And I've got a piece of bronze that I rolled to a number four, pretty thin. And I did use my cutter this time to actually cut strips of my other two clays that I'm going to use, which are the peacock and the purple. And I'm just going to go ahead and create a sort of striped sheet here, alternating these colors and fitting the stripes. In fact, I might, eh, that's fine. Um, you could put them as close together or as far apart as you want because I'm going to roll this through my pasta machine one more time. So they're going to meld together a little bit. So keep here, you can break off the ends if you want to keep your colors because I'm not going to use all this clay. Instead of making a whole ton of scrap that's mixed colors, you can clean it up a little bit at this stage. Okay, and now I'm going to roll it through my pasta machine just once just to kind of flatten it and then cover the back of my tin. So keep that scrap. You could do something with that later. And I'm just going to take this, center it over the tin. Make sure you don't have any air bubbles and then work it down carefully over the sides of the container. Use your thumb to gently press it. You don't want to wrestle with it because then you'll crack your clay. Just be gentle. And again, decide how far down you want it to come. I might pick some other thing to do with that or I might just kind of smooth and press the clay to get it as close to that edge as I can get it. Your thumb is a great tool. And then we're going to bake all of this and uh, I'm going to decorate mine with some Gilder's paste, which is my new current obsession. Because I just bought some and I really really like them but you could use pearl x if you wanted to do a little um something to bring out this texture i'll probably leave the back of this alone to be honest because this is pretty and all of these colors have pearl in them so they're already kind of shiny and um sparkly and stuff but on the front i'm going to do a little something to it when it comes out of the oven my tea caddy is out of the oven and look at the back is really pretty. I like that. But I'm not going to do any more decorating to it. What I want to do is the front. So I have Gilder's Paste and I have four colors. I am a metallic kind of a person. So the four colors that I picked are German Silver, which is actually more of a sort of deep um, light antique gold kind of a color and patina which is the turquoisey kind of color that that copper turns when it gets older bronze which is a deeper it's not really dark like this this color is called bronze but let me see this color is more of a a deep gold and then african bronze which actually has a sort of green tint to it it's like a green gold and green gold is my favorite color ever but it's not going to go with this so that I'm definitely not using right now I think I might use the uh, let's use the patina because there's some turquoise going on in here and I'm just going to use my finger uh, because I don't care 
if you care, put on a glove or use some kind of a rag or whatever to get your color on there. Um, but Gilder's paste is really easy to use because it goes on pretty much after you bake and you can just rub it wherever you want it and it's going to stick. It's a paste wax. It's got an oil um, base to it so you just kind of let it dry and then it's it's there. So I'm going to kind of just use it all over. Not a ton of it but enough to bring out some of that texture and design. And then on the design around the word T, I'm just going to rub it onto the top parts of my clay so that you can see the word. And then I'm going to call it done. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun to make little gifts or to make something special for yourself like I did. Um, but so simple. And then for this, just wash your hands. It, it comes off pretty easily. Thanks for joining me on Polymer Clay TV.